Fred, if uh, you feel like you can do it and if you're all set otherwise, when, when you are all set otherwise, if you just wanted to play a little walking music or something for a, a couple of minutes until I, uh, until I give you a word to start. Okay, thank you. Anytime you're ready, you can start doing that now. Yeah, and, and I'll nod at you when, you're, when, when we need to go. Okay, thank you.
Peace be unto you. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so I send you. The Lord is risen. Amen. Hallelujah. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill. Before all his people. How precious in the eyes of the Lord. Is the death of his faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. The son of your handmaid, you have loosened my bonds. With thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill. Before all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O Jerusalem.
children of God. The Lord is our God. The Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul and with all your might. You shall love your neighbor. As yourself. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. You are welcome here. Let us pray. Ever-present, yet elusive God, companion on the way, you walk behind, beside, beyond. You catch us unawares. Break through the disillusionment and despair clouding our vision that, with wide-eyed wonder, we may find our way and journey on as messengers of your good news. God's people say, Amen. Friends, we stand in need of mercy, reconciliation, and conversion. Let us pray. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people imparti impartially according to their deeds. Live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors. Not with perishable things like silver or gold. But with the precious blood of Christ. Like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world. But was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God. Who raised him from the dead. And gave him glory. So that your faith and hope are set on God. Reverently then, we consider our ways and our need of mercy. Friends, be assured of God's mercy and of your pardon. Listen to the words of Scripture. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love. Love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable but of imperishable seed. Through the living and enduring word of God. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Our lesson this morning is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, the story of the walk to Emmaus and the revealing of the Lord in the breaking of the bread. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all his people, and how the chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the only one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us what they, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them, the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told him what hath told, what happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. May God bless this word of holy scripture to our understand. <clears throat> I know I'm not the only one who's really feeling the effects of the coronavirus shutdown, the quarantine, the change in patterns. It's like many of us. It's, it's a time that uh, is bringing up emotions and moods that are different than usual. Sometimes low, sometimes not wondering, sometimes frustrated, sometimes fearful. I, I suppose I'm not alone in feeling this wide range of emotions. And we see it around us in the people we speak to, in the very tone of the neighborhood that we're in. We're in unusual times. 
So when we listen to the scripture that we have today, and these, uh, dis these disciples, the second rank of disciples, not the eleven, but Cleopas and his companion were certainly well known, well known to Jesus, well known to the eleven. Uh, let's think about their place and their spot at that, this moment. Now, in effect, you could say that after all of these events happened, that these guys were getting out of Dodge. They were getting out of town. It made sense, didn't it? I mean, their spiritual leader, their rabbi, the person they were following, he was put to death, he was arrested. Uh, are they out to get the people who were associated with him? Maybe it's time to get out of town ourselves. What's going to happen to us? You know, certainly fear, maybe prudence, maybe a combination, took over their hearts and they said, well, let's just lay low for a while and get out of town while other people lay low and we're just going to see if we can skip the unpleasantness that might be coming. And so on that Sunday morning, right after Sabbath, they were headed out of town. So they were on the way to Emmaus, on the way to this little village, on the way to Galilee, onto the road to go to the north. Jesus walked with them, but they did not see him. Their eyes had not been open to who this person was. He walked with him as though he was a stranger. And he talked to them. He listened to their story. He heard their concerns. I mean, put yourself in the place of these two leaving town. What were they talking about? I mean, they were upset. They had to be. They were fearful. They had to be. They didn't know what to do. Their world was turned upside down. It had to be. They were shaken and talking about it to each other, right? Perfectly human. Perfectly good. And into the midst of that heartfelt discussion of things that really mattered, who shows up? Jesus. So, friends, as we are discussing these events of our lives that we're going through now, yes, it could be the shutdown. Yes, it could be the fear that we're feeling for our loved ones. For some of us, it's bereavement. For others of us, it's concern for people that are ill or concerned that we may become ill. Isn't it? Important that we talk to one another and discuss it and listen to the voices that come to us in the midst of that discussion. Do you know whether or not it will be the voice of the Lord speaking to us? And so back to the scripture story. Jesus then went on to explain how all of the scripture, Moses through the prophets, Testify to him being the Messiah, him having risen from the dead. The disciples listened. You know, just getting that intellectual knowledge, you know, just doing the scripture study, so to speak. Can you imagine having Jesus as your scripture study leader? What a Bible study leader he must have been. Just listening to that alone. Well, that wasn't yet enough for their eyes to be open to him, but it was enough for their hearts to burn. They didn't recognize that burning for what it was, but they knew there was something special about this man, and even though he was just a traveler, you know, they wanted him to join them for dinner. They wanted him to be a part of the hospitality of the day. They invited him to the meal, invited him to bless and break the bread. And in that connection, well prepared for by the study that they had just been through, well prepared for by the authentic conversations that they had been having with one another about their lives, when they broke the bread in the intimacy of that gathering, 
they recognized the Lord. And the Lord vanished then. I'm sure they had more to say. <laughs> I wanted to hear more. But the job was different now for them. Now it was for them to have the testimony, them to lead the scripture, them to continue to share the real, powerful, relevant, authentic conversations of what was happening in their lives. Knowing that Jesus was present, So they turned in place. You know, and that was initially what I wanted to talk about with this sermon, is the moment that when everything changes and we're inspired to change the direction of our lives because we see things newly, we've made a change, something's different. The Lord has touched us, we've had a revelation. Now we turn to change, but guess what? In that moment of turning, we're still exactly where we are. And it's true for them. In the moment they decided to return to Jerusalem, return to that nascent, if you want to call it, the prime gathering of the church, that very early gathering of those who loved the Lord and were involved in the movement. Now, as they made that decision that, no, this isn't right for us to just, you know, head off to the outskirts and stay safe. What's right for us is to go back, to rejoin them. In that moment that they had that realization where they were changed, they're still in exactly the same place they are. And that's true for every one of us. That when we are converted, we're where we are just changed directions. They were leaving Jerusalem, now they were headed back. Same spot, different direction. And it makes the world a difference. But I'd like to go a little bit deeper into that very moment of turning in place. It was going to be a new normal for them, going back. They were not going to be following the popular rabbi. They were not going to be uh, one of the group that is, you know, following this teacher and soaking up his teachings and sharing with one another about their insights. Now it was going to be different. A whole element of risk was on board. This pop, once popular preacher was now an executed outlaw who's the, apparently had risen from the dead. And they'd seen him. And they knew that there was going to be terrible reaction to it. They knew that this was going to be a truth that was worth living for. They knew that the way they were going to be practicing their religion was going to be changing completely because this was not the Messiah they were expecting. This was not the Messiah that was going to uh, adjust and tweak and maybe reform the status quo a little bit, that this was going to be a completely different way of living and loving God in our neighbor. They knew all of this. That they were going to go into a normal that was new, that they probably had wonderful, inspiring hopes for, that they didn't know what to expect from, that was going to be different. And they just didn't know. And yet, they were going to put one foot in front of the other and they were going to return and embrace it and lift it and follow the 11. Now, it's a powerful story. It's the story of being convinced, or the popular term is, popular, I should say traditional term, is convincement. 
when you listen to the scripture, you see evidence and your brain gets it, but you hold reservations. You're not altogether there yet. You're not a believer. Then they were convicted. Jesus was in the bread, not in the breaking of the bread. Now I believe, right? Resulting in a conversion. They changed directions. For them, that meant returning to the eleven. That meant going back to Jerusalem. So this process of being convinced, being convicted, our lives converting, is a process that every one of us goes through. How are we going through it now? You know, for a lot of us, uh, initially when we were hearing about the coronavirus, it was, you know, there's going to be a bad flu that people are going to get through. And maybe we're going to have to take some precautions along the way. And then it got to be more. And then it got to be more. And then a virtual shutdown. Then virtual stay at home. I know that it wasn't just a couple of weeks ago. It seems like an eternity ago that, you know, I was talking to other minister friends about, you know, how are we going to have a big celebration of Pentecost at the beginning of July, and you know, instead of the normal time, and welcome everybody back because I still had in my mind that, you know, there was going to be a date and everything was going to go back to normal. And now we hear that no, if you listen to Governor Cuomo anyway, no, Things are going to come back more slowly in phased ways. It's not going to be all at once. There's not going to be an immediate return to normal. You know, you read the pages of the newspaper and the folks that comment on business and economy say that, no, there's not going to be a fast snap back. This is going to take time for recovery. A long time. And we don't know how it's going to be. And to this day, I, I can think about how we're going to return to church, how many pews we have to skip, how many distance we need to keep between each other. We've got to make plans, right? But do I know just how it's going to be? And in truth, I don't. I mean, I'm going to be listening very carefully to you know my minister peers, right? You know, because their churches, their denominations, a lot of smart people who deep understanding of the sentiments of congregations, large and small. They're going to be thinking real hard on this. I'm going to be thinking real hard on this. So will the leadership in local churches. And, you know, what's not known to us now will be known to us going forward. But we don't know yet. And so we're very, very much right now like those disciples, like Cleopas and his companion. You know, we're, we're convinced, I pray we're all convinced that the Lord really is with us in all of this. We don't know what it all means yet. That's going to be lifetimes or generations of reflecting. But we, we know that the Lord is close. We know that we're inspired to love one another in ways that we have yet to discover how to do well. We know we're going to have to do the interior work of accepting the real depth of emotions that we're having in the midst of this time and push through what we need to push through in order to you know, make the connections that we can rightly make at this time and to share the love and the hope that we can at this time. I hope we're all convicted of this. And now it's the conversion. Now we're still in Emmaus and we haven't yet even begun the journey yet back to Jerusalem. And we're going to be putting one foot in front of the other. And, you know, just like we discuss things on the way away from Jerusalem, we're going to discuss things on the way back to Jerusalem. We're going to tell our truth. We're going to listen to the counsel of others. We're going to add our voice to the testimony that our Lord is with us in the midst of all of this. And in the meantime, we'll share our love for one another.
those who are grieving, those who are frightened, will seek to be the blessing that our foot fall, that our path gives us the opportunity to share. So friends, as we embark on this unknown new normal, I pray all of us will seek to be a blessing to our neighbor according to their need and allow our neighbors to bless us according to our need because God is with us, behind us, and before us. May God bless our reflections upon Holy Scripture this morning. My brothers and sisters, let us pray. Almighty God, we lift up to you a world that is full of wonder, a world that is full of your presence, a world where your glory is sometimes elusive to us, a world that teaches us to trust in you. Almighty God, we pray that you are with those who grieve, that in your own mysterious way, in the depths of their hearts, you will comfort them, and that you will send your children to comfort one another in their need. We pray for the souls of all those who have died in these last months because of the pandemic and all the other causes of death. Almighty God, receive your children into eternity. And Almighty God, we pray for those 
who grieve, that they may trust in your glory and be true to the sorrows of their own heart and so celebrate your love in the love that they share, in the love that endures. Almighty God, we pray for all of the people who are helpers in this world. In the forefront of our mind are all of the medical professionals that are just extending themselves to their very best ability in difficult circumstances. The doctors, the nurses, all of the therapists, the administrators, all the people who work for the health of, health of others. And all those who keep our society running, those police officers and first responders, the retail workers, those people who are keeping the electricity running and the water going, the people who keep our communications functioning, God bless them, Lord, be with them. Help us to bless them as well. Help us to learn newly what essential worker means and inspire us to relate more fittingly to them in the days ahead. We pray for those people who, in observance of the stay at home and quarantine orders, are going through their own emotional journeys, a lot of its suffering, a lot of its struggle, a lot of its frustration, anxiety, edginess. Almighty God, in this world where there is both exceeding kindness and irritability in ways that we are not so accustomed to, help us to minister to our brothers and sisters in need, our friends and co-workers in need. Help us to take the spirit of forgiveness and forbearance, which is so very real right now, all around us. Help us to take that, to extend it, to turn it into a blessing. Help us to live with kindness. Help us to show mercy. Help us to do our part in justice. Heavenly God, we lift up to you our prayers of thanksgiving for those people who have done well and are recovering and getting better. It's a beautiful thing. And our gratitude for everyone who helped them. Lord, we lift up to the gratitude that so many of us feel for ongoing income, ongoing positions, ongoing opportunities that even in the midst of, you know, so much contraction in our society, in our economy, in our marketplace, that we still, that so many of us still enjoy that. We pray that none of us will take it for granted and share it where we're able to. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for the help we do enjoy and the goodness of the relationships that we enjoy. And we have a special prayer for those people who are suffering because relationships are becoming frayed in the midst of all of this. <clears throat> Teach us and show us, Lord, the ways that we can be a balm to the spirits of those who are bruised and irritated. We pray, too, as always, for those in authority. We pray for the leaders of this world. We're very focused, of course, on our political leaders, but we don't forget all the other leaders, all those people leading businesses, leading institutions, all of those charged with the roles of administration in our world. Almighty God, we lift them up to you. We pray that you will help them and aid them. And along with our political leaders and political leaders locally, nationally, and throughout the world, 
We pray that you will stir up in all of the leaders of this world. Stir up by the virtues of your Holy Spirit and the direct influence of your Spirit. A greater sensitivity to their own conscience. Stir up the virtues that you have planted and cultivated there. Stir up the conscience of our leaders. Help them to be attentive to them. Help them to allow their conscience to convict them and lead them to conversion according to their needs and the good of the people they're responsible for and the duties to which they're held accountable. Lord, make our leaders people of conscience and make all of us who follow them to treat them with respect and to follow them conscientiously ourselves, allowing our minds to be convinced by the best of information that's available to us, respectful of those who have the authority of knowledge and expertise. Guide us in our understanding and allow our hearts to be convic convicted that we may live according to the best lights you've given us. And so in conversion, transform our lives that we may be a light to the world, bringing the lights you've given us to others. And we pray that our light will be the light of Christ. Almighty God, you know the many needs around us. You know our sensitive positions. We pray, Almighty God, that you will lead and guide us always according to the directions that you lay out before us. Make us kind. Make us patient. Make us just. And fill us with your mercy. And for that kingdom, Where your life reigns, where your love is real and acknowledged, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And God's people say, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining with us for our Sunday morning worship. Um, I believe that there is a Zoom coffee hour that's being organized, and that should be uh, in the comments, I believe, on, uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, if not, please check your email. And uh, so there's that. On Wednesday, we will be having our noon uh, Zoom Bible study. So check your emails or contact me if you don't get our emails. Uh, and we'll be able to uh, share in Bible study uh, noon on Wednesday. The way we've been uh, doing it is preparing for the Sunday followings uh, uh, scripture reading. So we'll get announcements out about that, and you know, so we just look forward to the uh, to the Bible study on Wednesday <coughs> tonight at six thirty at the uh, Old Sears parking lot in Hicksville. Uh, there will be a gathering of to say thank you to the uh, to the people that are keeping our society together, our healthcare workers and other essential workers. Uh, the, basically, it's a parade of driving through in your car. It's something our local interfaith group has been working at, and I uh, hope you'll look forward to joining us there. That's at 6.30 in the Old Sears parking lot in Hicksville. So looking forward to seeing more of uh, folks on Zoom and being in touch with you. God bless you on this Sunday afternoon.